Okay. We're dividing polynomials. Um, I'm going to take us through a little blast from the past and talk just a smidgen about long division. We could do all this dividing by polynomials as long division, that you use that process. But I think for our sanity, we're going to focus on one method instead of two because it'll always work um, for what we're going to work with to do what's called synthetic division. But anyway, we still need to remember just a couple key points from long division. First of all, let's take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and divide by 11. Okay? Another way to write that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 divided by 11. And then in the way good old fashioned, hopefully you remember something of this. Maybe you don't do it anymore in elementary, or you, there might be another way too. If for some reason you remember another way to do long division, will you mention it in class to me? Uh, because there's another way to go off to the side and do this um, totally different process, which is actually kind of cool. All right, but let me go through this. You try to find out how many times 11 goes into 1. 11 doesn't go into 1, so now you look at 12. 11 goes into 12 one time, so you take 1 times 11. 11! Then you do the subtract, 12 minus 11 is 1. Now when I was a kid, I don't know if you guys do it, we had to do this little arrow thing. Bring down the 3, I think is what we would say. Alright, how many times does 11 go into 13? Once. 1 times 11 is 11. 13 minus 11 is 2. Bring down the 4. How many times does 11 go into 24? 2 times. 2 times 11 is 22. So we subtract, 24 minus 22 is 2. Bring down the 5. How many times does 11 go into 25? 2 times. 2 times 11, 22. Subtract, I get 3. Bring down the 6. 11 goes into 36 3 times. 3 times 11, 33. 6 minus 3 is 3. Bring down the 7. And how many times does 11 go into 37? Three times. Three times 11 is 33. And then you would have 3 minus 7, which is 4. One way you would write this, I specifically remember doing this from elementary, maybe you don't. You'd write remainder 4. As you got older, you also learned that you'd write 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. And then you would write 4 elevenths, because you take this 4, this 11. And then even further down the road, you may have put a decimal, and then you would bring down the zero, and you would keep going, and then you would get the decimal equivalent of 4 elevenths is basically what it boiled down to. Okay, we basically needed that whole thing just to, just to show you once in a while how to do that by hand, and also because we need to know what a remainder is and why we work with one. Okay, now that I said that, this doesn't deal with that, but we will here in a couple problems. We want to simplify this. All right, so the book is basically taking this over this, this over this, this over this, and we're breaking down each one of those pieces. So let's do that. 5a squared b over 5ab. And then we're new minus. 15ab cubed over 5ab. And then we're going to do plus 10a cubed b to the fourth over 5ab. Okay? This is kind of what we've been doing for the last couple days, uh, especially with the exponents. What's 5 over 5? 1. What's a squared over a? a. Because you're taking 2 minus 1. What's b over b? Well, 1. So all I have, this simplifies down to basically a. Now I'm going to look at this term. So minus. 15 over 5 is 3. a over a cancels. I might just write that out there. b cubed over b. When you're dividing with like bases, you subtract your exponents. So you're going to have b to the second power. Plus, 10 over 5 is 2. a to the third over a. a squared. b to the fourth over b is b to the third power. Because you have a 1 there, 4 minus 1 is 3. All right, that is your polynomial simplified. Let's try it again. Right, each one of these over 3x squared y. Okay, 6 times the fifth y squared over 3x squared y minus 
9 x to the 7 y cubed over 3 x squared y. 3 over 3 basically cancels. x squared over x squared cancels. y over y cancels. Does that mean we write nothing or 0? No. If you had 8 over 8, what's 8 divided by 8? 1. x over x, 1. 10 over 10, 1. All right, next I have 6 divided by 3, which is 2, x to the fifth over x to the second, which is x to the third power. y squared over y is just y. Okay, and then negative 9, well, I'm going to put the minus there. 9 over 3 is 3. When you're dividing with like bases, you subtract your exponents. 7 minus 2 is 5. 3, there's a 1 there. 3 minus 2, or 3 minus 1 is 2. There's your answer. I guess I should check. Does anything combine together, like do those terms? Let me go back one problem and see. No, those don't combine either. Okay, here we go. I'm going to teach you something that's called synthetic division. We're just going to pop right to that. If you look at the book, there's a long division method for this. <coughs> uh, let's not do that. Okay, so this is a polynomial. This is a binomial. It's a type of polynomial. It just only has two terms. So normally, this can be written like this, x squared minus 2x minus 15 divided by x minus 5, okay? But what we're going to do is this whole other process, and we're going to take the coefficients of these terms. So x squared becomes 1x squared, but just write the 1. Negative 2x, you're going to write negative 2. Negative 15, you just write the negative 15. And then we put a box over here. And we're going to put the number opposite that you see here. So you see negative 5? Put 5. I guess 5 minus 5 equals 0. Okay? And now I'm going to leave a space, and I'm going to put this bar across. Okay? So 1 comes down. Kind of like my arrows with the long division, right? Bring down the 1. Now what we do is we take this 5 times the 1, and we write it right here. So here's kind of the, the pattern. We're going to take 5 times the 1, and we're going to write it right there, okay? Now, negative 2 plus 5 is 3, right? Kind of like division, we just subtract there anyway. And then what do I do? I'm going to take 5 times the 3, and it's going to be written right there. Uh, uh. So 5 times 3 is 15, and here's a cool thing. What's negative 15 plus 15? Zero. I'm not going to write the zero. I think it's better if I just leave that alone. Okay? Now, because I had x squared here, and then x, and we're going to have the descending order, then I am going to go down, I don't know if I want to say down one. This is to the second power, so this is going to be a 1x. Notice how x to the second moves down a power to x to the first power. And what's in descending order after that? A 3. We don't write 3x or anything, it's just this. So basically, this is your answer right here. If you take this divided by this, you get x plus 3. Or, if you wanted to, you could always check your answer by taking x plus 3 times x minus 5, which means you have to write in parentheses and you have to FOIL it out. In fact, why not just do that once? We're going to make this a good and long video because this is so different from anything you've ever learned. Okay, remember this? That's my fast FOIL, x squared minus 2x minus 15. Look at how that checks. So you should know on any quiz or test if you've got the right answer. All right, here we go again. Uh, divide means that basically I'm going to copy these down. First of all, the coefficients, that is 1, 5, and 6. What number am I going to put in this little box out here? The opposite of what I see. I see a 3, so I'm going to put negative 3 here. Make my bar, leave some space, bring down the 1, okay? And now I go ahead and I got my negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 5 plus negative 3 is 2. What do I do next? Take 3 times, oh, whoops, that didn't come off with the highlighter. Oh, well. All right, 3 times, negative 3 times 2 gives me uh, uh, negative 6. And once again, nicely enough, it comes out. So this was x squared to begin with, so I come down a power, so I have 1x, and then I have plus 2. And if you want to FOIL, you would take this times this and see if you get this. Okay. 
Now, this is a little different question. Which expression, or we're going to figure out what expression is equal to a squared minus 5a plus 3 times 2 minus a to the negative first. Wait a minute. What does negative first power mean? Oh, anytime you have a negative exponent, we should never leave that in our answer. We're going to flip it and give it a positive exponent. All right, f a squared minus 5a plus 3 over 2 minus a. Uh, okay, so that's all lovely and fine and dandy, but we need to actually break this down. So my coefficient here is 1, then I have negative 5, and then I have 3. What number do I put in here? Oh, shoot, now I just said to you guys it's the opposite of what you see. You see a 2, you're going to write a negative 2, aren't you? Oh, oh, am I going to start this video over? No, I'm not. We're just going to make a note of it that you are going to be putting in uh, a 2 in this place. Why? Because 2 minus 2 gives you 0. And let me, let me do a quick little double, make myself feel better by looking in the book as you guys are all like, press... Press pause until I start writing again. Just press pause. Just because I can't press pause in the middle of this. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What can the matter be? Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to go with the 2 because I'm 99.9% certain that's what I'm going to do. Can I move this problem now? Shoot. Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, that 2 came with it. Oh, silly me. That's okay. Now you guys are really going to be irritated. Okay, every once in a while you just need to be irritated by your teacher. Okay, bring down the 1. This is kind of not so fun. I feel like every time we're bringing down a 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. This is interesting. Now I have a negative 3. The other times I didn't have anything left over. What this means is I have... 1x, because I was at a squared, so should I write it in a's? I have a uh, to the first power, I should have the 1 there, minus 3. And technically, I have a remainder of negative 3. So what I'm going to write is plus negative 3 over, what am I dividing by? I'm dividing by 2 minus a. Isn't that crazy? That's just crazy. Okay, so this is what came out even, a minus 3. This is your remainder, and remember how on the very first screen or the very first example practically, we wrote it over, I think in that case it was 11, so we have 2 minus a. All right, let me keep going because this is going to get long here. Okay, same kind of idea. It's actually x squared minus x minus 7 over x minus 3. Why is it over? Because of this negative exponent, so we flip it. All right, let's go ahead and do this synthetic division. We got 1, we have negative 1, we have negative 7. What number am I putting in this corner? Uh, what number makes it go to, three, uh, go to 0? 3 minus 3. Okay, so now bring down the 1. We need a different coefficient maybe pretty soon. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 7 plus 6 is 1. So we had an x squared. See x squared, so I come down a power, I've got 1x plus 2, and then I'm going to have a remainder, plus 1 over what I divided by. I divided by x minus 3. Okie dokie, I'm going to keep going. Okay, now, this is um, a little bit longer division, so we're going to work with this. We have x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4. Coefficients are going down. 1, negative 4, 6, negative 4. What number is going in the box? 2. Hey, I just want to point out is third power, second power, first power is actually x to the 0 power. You have to have every power represented like a place value is what it boils down to. Okay. And we're going to deal with that in a little bit where we don't have every power shown here or every, um, yeah, every x to the whatever power. So here we go. Bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Now I take this 2 times 2 and I get 4. Oh, this is lovely. I don't have any remainder. Beautiful. 
Now, remember how I said you come down a power? So you were at the third power, now you're going to be at the second power. So I have 1x squared minus 2x, see how I'm going from 2 to 1, and then we just have plus 0. That's your answer. So if you wanted to take the time, you could still take this times this, and you would get this, that long polynomial there. Okay, I just got to keep showing, you know what? I think you can handle this one on your own. We're going back kind of a step. I'm going to kind of keep to the tough ones, like this one. All right, so example eight you should have done on your own. Give me your best shot. Notice it goes four to two. There's a one here, and then I have actually an x to the zero power. I'm missing that third power. We still have to put it into our synthetic division. Otherwise, it won't work out right. So coefficients are four. Since there is no third power, I'm going to have a zero, because I technically have zero y to the third power. Just don't bother writing it. Then I have negative five. Then I have two. Then I have four. And then what number goes in the box? Oh, yeah. One half. How did I figure that? Uh, I go ahead and set that equal to zero, and I solve. Uh, yeah. Let me just, I, once again, I have to make sure it's a negative one half for this example, so this is a positive one half. Okay, how did I do that again? 2y minus 1 equals 0. So I have 2y equals 1, and then I have y equals 1 half. That's how I got this over here. I never should have said opposite of what you see. That was such a bad teaching moment right there. Okay, bring down the 4. See, now we have a different number other than 1. 1 half times 4. Hmm, 2. Okay. Uh, and then what do I do? I go ahead and take 0 plus 2 is 2. And I have 1 half times 2 is 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. 0 times a half is 0, and then I bring down a 4. Okay? So now, once again, I started with a fourth power for my exponent, so I bring it down one. I have 4x to the third power plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 0. I'm going to write that just to kind of clarify. And then I have this remainder. It makes me nervous. Did I do something wrong? Plus... 4 over 2y minus 1. Okay. <laughs> Let me do even another one of those. Let me make sure it's not the same one as I just looked at. It's not, thank goodness. Okay, here we go. We got our coefficient 8. Then we have nothing in the spot. See how you have to be on the lookout for that? Then we got a 0. Then we got a negative 2. Then we got a 1. Then we got a 4. What do I put in my box? I set this equal to 0, and I get negative 1, so y equals negative 1 half. Okay, so I do negative 1 half right here. In, oops, I didn't put the negative with it. Okay, here, make my bar. Bring down the 8. Negative 1 half times 8 is negative 4. 0 and negative 4 is negative 4. A half, ooh, yeah. Negative 1 half times negative 4 is positive 2. Negative 2 uh, and 2 is 0. Negative 1 half times 0 is 0. 1 and 0 comes together to be 1. Negative 1 half and 1 is negative 1 half. So 4 minus 1 half is 3 and a half. I think I'm going to leave it 3 and a half. All right, we start with our fourth power. We go to our third power. Um, that'll be 8 x to the third power minus 4x squared plus 0x's, see how I'm writing that in there just so we're all clear, plus 1. Then I have a remainder plus, this is kind of making me nervous, 3 and a half over 2y plus 1. And yeah, that's what we got. And we're going to call that plenty. Plenty of synthetic division.